I think we should go ahead and call the uh, March 7th uh, meeting of the Trophy Club Planning Zoning Commission to order. It's 7.01 p.m. We have a quorum. <laughs> Barely. We're missing uh, Commissioner Branham, who's absent, and Stevens. Rylan said, Rowe said he was going to be here, but we'll see if he shows. But right now, he's absent. So we'll go ahead and start. First uh, session is, uh, first segment is uh, public comments. Do we have anybody signed up to speak tonight? Doesn't look like it either. Uh, I'll read this anyway, right? So this is an opportunity for citizens to address the board on any matter. The board is not permitted to discuss or take action on any presentations made to the board. Presentations are limited to matters over which the board has authority. Speakers have up to four minutes or the time or the time limit term by the presiding officer. Each speaker must complete the speaker's form that includes the topics to be presented. You may also email Alicia. Anyway, um, nobody's here. Nobody signed up, so we've done that. Great. We have no uh, items that require public hearing tonight, so we'll go right into regular session. Um, agenda item one is case FP 23001. The Cypress Estates at Trophy Club 4-H. Consider and, poss and, and possibly act on a request for a final plat for lots 1 through 10, Block A, the Cypress Estates at Trophy Club, consisting of 35, I'm sorry, 3.581 acres out of the Richard W. Allen Survey, abstract number 5, generally located south of Nottingham Drive at Annadale Drive, Denton County, Trophy Club, Texas. Staff report. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. Um, the owner, Trophy Club Estates Development, just a side note, Yashua could not be here this evening, so we can put unlimited conditions on this. <laughs> no, he's not, he's not here this evening, um, but... Anyway, um, again, Trophy Club Estates Development, they have submitted a final plat. This is nine residential lots with one common open space lot. Uh, as you know, this was approved, the preliminary plat, back in September of 27. And this property was formerly used as a gas well site, and it was known as 4-H. There are three wellheads. Uh, they've been buried and capped according to the requirements for Texas Railroad Commission. They have been identified in the cul-de-sac. If you all recall, like on 7-H and 8-H, that was one of the requirements that we had. So now each of these, you know, will, will come that way. Um, those three heads are in the cul-de-sac of Iris Drive. The proposed final plat is located in an R12 zoning district. They do meet the minimum requirements for lot size, the front, rear, and side setbacks, as well as the width and the depth uh, requirements for R12 zoning. Iris Drive, it's in an overlink uh, cul-de-sac, which was approved back at the preliminary plat stage, uh, approved variance for that. And Helen, Eve, and I, we're going to tag team this just to kind of get into the, the flow of that. So I'm going to allow her to come up now. Thank you, Matt and Chairman and Commissioners. So the image that you see is the graphic representation of the final plat. And wanted to point out a couple of the items. Uh, this is, um, you've seen in the staff recommendations, there were a, a few items that we needed to work out. And we are in continuing to work on them with the applicant as well as with our, our town attorney and staff. Uh, because it is, it is a final plat, they received approval of the preliminary plat, so there are a number of things that were al already um, locked into for development. But this one is a little bit unusual because it relies on access through 
a neighboring HOA property. So we've been asking them to provide uh, the necessary documentation for the, um, they call it a right-of-way easement, that that was transferred from the Abbey Moore HOA to the developer, and we need to get that into the city's name. Uh, because if we're going to have um, improvements in there, we need to make sure that we have the opportunity to access them. Additionally, um, the lot 30 in blue, and it's also on the other side of the street. This was once the gas easement where the lines actually fed to the wellheads that are down in the, um, the cul-de-sac virus. And we've asked them to provide the documentation that it has been abandoned. Um, they're working on it. They're digging as much as they can. Um, so that's a, a little outstanding item, as well as um, recently we asked them to add a label to this open space lot that it's also a utility easement. All of the fronts of the lots um, in your code requirements there's a 10-foot utility easement, and it's quite clear that it, you know, it is on all of these other lots, but it's not as, as clear on lot 10. So we wanted to make sure it, it is identified as the utility easement because they plan to connect sewer through this former gas easement. So it will be a utility easement accommodating the sewer line. And there's a, a touch little a hair of that that falls onto lot 10. So that's why we want to make sure it's included in that. So uh, another item, and it's in the staff report, the uh, developer has had this property annexed into the Abbey Moore HOA. Um, so thankfully, that, that's one item that they knew about that they needed to take care of. Um, so moving along in the staff recommendation, um, you all have the ability to approve a plat with conditions or just flat out approve it without any conditions. And I'd, I'd say we have about four that are you know fairly important. I, a fifth one would be abandoning or providing us with the documentation that the well um, easement, for the service line in lot 30 that that actually has been abandoned. So uh, the first one is that the park fees do need to be uh, paid prior to filing the plat. Uh, convey the right of way easement through lot 1X block H. That is the area in pink that I was talking about. Right <clears throat> now it's in the developer's name. We need it in the town's name. Establish a permanent utility easement in lot 30, we talked about that, and add utility easement to the open space label in lot 10. And the applicant is aware of the conditions for the final plat. We've been um, communicating, and we staff would like you to know that the, flat, the plat will not be filed until all conditions are met. They still have a developer's agreement to complete um, some other paperwork and filing of these documents and easements in um, Ditton County. So be happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> and you may not be able to answer it, but one thing that I did notice is down in the southwest corner of the track, there's a pretty significant elevation rise back there. And also the masonry fence does not complete the enclosure of the development? Is it intended to remain open? Do they intend to not carry that masonry fence all the way around? Are they going to do something to mitigate that fall, um, the potential fall of water running down through in there to the rest of the development? So the, the masonry fence is deceiving because it's not encompassing the entire property right so their plan is they we've already seen the civils i've looked at i mean i'm not an engineer but i've looked all arrows are pointing away from each one of those lots and they're all going uh let's see they're all going northeast yeah northeast 
either to the street and then any of the lots that are on that far east side, then they're using the drainage easement that's already there. Um, so they are building up to make sure that any water is going either towards the street, storm drain, or to the easement that's already there. Yeah, and that, that's just what caught my eye. It was probably seven feet difference. Yes. Up on that grassy knoll. And, you know, it, <clears throat> it kind of looks strange because you had this pretty masonry fence all the way around <coughs> until you got back into the corner. And then the only fence was the stockade fence that the homeowners had around. That's right. And that was it. It was an outline. And so I didn't know if they had plans to complete that <coughs> fence or just leave it like it is. It'll stay open and except for, so what Joshua did convey to 7-H and 8-H homeowners that we've already you know, had discussions with, is any any fencing or any walls that are damaged, they're going to be replacing them, you know, as, as brand new. Okay. So. Yeah, it was just a question that I had whether they were going to finish it out or just leave it as it existed. Because it looks kind of out of place. But it's back in the corner, I guess. So <clears throat> once you put a house up, you won't see it. I have a question. Yeah. Um, kind of in line with that and trophy club and drainage is always fun um, with whatever drainage comes out of here do we know that we have capacity for it wherever it's going yes that it's headed towards the east yes between so after preliminary plat was approved that's when they green lighted civil because as a developer you're not going to spend a ton of money you know, at that stage. So that's when they gave them a green light. Capacities have already been sent to our engineers and the MUD, and okay. they're good with those. Yes, sir. It's very, very few homes. In fact, uh, the MUD thinks that they've actually over, over piped, per se, some of the water that's only necessary for these nine homes. So it's a so what, I'm just like a follow-up question on the uh, this drainage to the east. Um, that's a ravine in there, isn't it? So they're just going to dump water into this ravine, and wherever that goes, that's where the water goes. It just flows mm -hmm. as it's naturally been flowing. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Yes, TMPs looked at that. I mean, it's it's minimal compared to what it is now, because they're fixing to change only the back halves of those lots will be draining as opposed to, if you look at the existing civils, it's almost split down the middle that's draining that direction. So now you're actually going to have less going that way. It'll be going to a stormwater, if that makes sense. No. <laughs> Curb and gutter <clears throat> instead of free flow. So if you draw, I'm going to draw a line. If you look here, is that that's lot nine, eight, seven, and six, that's the center point of each of those homes. Those lots, the arrows are gonna be going back towards the- Toward that ravine. The ravine, yes. Okay. And so right now, if you look at existing, in fact, I, I noticed this, this area between lot one and two is currently actually flowing to these homes, the existing. And they will, re, they will change that all this area will be built up and be flowing towards the street. Towards so, the street? Yes, sir. And then eventually into the ravine? Yeah. So the whole thing goes in the ravine? That's correct. Oh, okay. Um, I've got one on uh, the wellheads. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Since this is a final, I don't know what the civils are going to show, but we talked about two things. One was... Um, the documentation with the Texas Railroad Commission that's, that's all in order, to just verify that. And two is putting the identifiers of those wells on the civils. They are on the civils, yes. and, okay. as per your request. Oh, well, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are on the civils. And the giant posts are in place. The giant posts? Yeah. That's the way they mark them with all the dust that they have on the lot still. They have metal pipes, so you don't miss. Oh, good. Yeah, you can. So when they're yeah. working, they won't. No way the equipment <laughs> operator is going to miss. Yeah, yeah. You can, yeah. You can yeah. see. Don't you say no see. way. Well, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Equipment operators wondering what the noise is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's grinding? Um, yeah, I was out there and I noticed that it looked like there was a bunch of giant moles making these mounds, and so I, I knew they were working on something, but I didn't know what was actually the goal of all that. Almost looked like somebody made pipes. Yeah. Concrete pipes that were under there that scooped it out, and it just kind of laid across the back. That's kind of what it looked like. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, that's it for me. Anybody? I have, I have one. Um, the sanitary sewer easement, that requires the current easement owner, the, pipe, the pipeline company or whoever it is, the oil company owns that or gas company, to abandon that, their portion thereof, or the entire easement? It would be the entire easement. And like I said, we've been working on that. They've provided documentation but it was specific to the gas well and not the feeder lines that service that. So they're still working on the information. It, the, the pipeline easement needs to be abandoned and then grant to the town, or I believe it's gonna go from the HOA to the developer, a utility easement, as well as a temporary construction easement to put the infrastructure in. And before we accept the infrastructure at the time of accepting it, when it comes to the town, utility easement will be granted to the town. Okay, so the abandonment and reassignment of the easement so you can do construction has to be done and documented before you can issue a construction permit? Yes. Okay. The reassignment, I believe, is on the right-of-way. It's on the street, not on the, not on the utility. But you would have to have that resolved before you could issue a construction permit. Otherwise, their sewer has nowhere to go. <clears throat> right. So, okay. I just want to clarify that. Vote. They do have a temporary construction already filed um, easement for that. And just a side note for the sewer, since you brought it up, the reason for you for doing the sewer there is for fall. So if they were choosing to do during for the right of way going and following Iris Drive to Nottingham, that would have raised a lot of a majority of those lots. Uh, was upwards of to four feet. So <laughs> to get the lift, fall so, or lift so yeah, to get yeah cost yeah, lift, cost lift. absolutely you know on mm -hmm. that but also just to maintain correct fall that is the, the ideal place for that. So okay. that's why they've chosen that as opposed to just running all utilities in the same area. Okay. okay. That's all I have. Anybody else? Anybody else? No one's else here to speak, speak with the developer or anything. So, anybody else have anything to say? No? Okay, good. Then we probably ought to look towards a motion. I'll take a crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to make, a, make the motion that. Um, we approve it uh, based um, based on the recommendations that we heard, and and uh, with those caveats added to it, subject to the conditions we talked about. Right, and that includes as per staff report. as per staff recommendations. Well, I think uh, we 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 talked about documentation of your your. Um, requirements I mean actually having documentation all that before the we, plats filed yes sir okay so that's, that's written documentation of the easement we talked about related the easements related to um, the um, sanitary sewer and what's the other one the utility, utility um, easement and, and what you you mentioned clarifying that uh, the yellow. Was, right. The we right can, of way we can color easement, code the, the motion. The right of way easement, the permanent utility easement for the sewer in lot 30, adding utility easement to lot 10, in addition to the open space label, and then the payment of the park fees before the plats filed. Right. And we don't we don't know the calculation on the park fees yet. We do. We do. Yes. He's okay. got them. They're going to pay them all at one time. Okay. Because that's been the other way around in the past. Mm -hmm. 
they will be paid before. So do you have a clear picture of the motion? Does anyone? <laughs> Given what I just said. <laughs> it, it could be a motion to approve with the conditions yes. recommended by staff. That, that's the motion. That's the motion. That's, that's the motion. Right. That sounds good. Do we have a second? Well, second. Second. We have a second. Yep. Um, any other comments or questions before we vote? All right. Call the vote. All in favor? Motion carries. Next agenda item, take appropriate action regarding the July 7th and February 7th, uh, two that, uh, sorry, July 27th, wait, two, two, 2022 and February 7th, 2023, Planning and Zoning Commission min minutes. Anyone had a chance, everybody had a chance to review those? We made one connection to seven, didn't we, last time? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, July 7th. Okay. I make a motion that we approve those. A second? A second. We have a second for Commissioner Poole. Okay, all in favor? Okay, motion carries. Uh, next item is uh, staff updates. All right, good evening again. Really the only update that I've got that's pretty current is for the Hutchins barbecue. So I met with Wes and his father this morning and discussing the signs. So really all they're wanting to do is just replace each of the existing trophy table signs with their signs. Uh, the, the one in the front that faces 114, the round trophy table, they're going to request that to be slightly larger than what is existing there. Um, other than that, it's going to be like for like on the one that faces uh, west. And then there's an odd kind of sign that face. It's I forgot what how you call those, but it's mounted to the building that's sideways, and they're just going to want barbecue. I think originally it said lounge. So um, also they're asking for. They've got a, a walk-in cooler that's there existing now. They're wanting to remove that, replace it with some kind of a storage for outside storage. The trophy table, um, when I first got here, as per, I guess, the agreements, that outside cooler was supposed to be completely covered, screened Screen. all the way around. It never got done. And so what he's, what he's asking is, is can he enlarge that area for, it's still existing, but use up all the space because there's standing space in there, add storage, but then screen it completely like it should have been done originally. So that's going to, that will be coming as well. Um, 3H, we don't know anything yet and then I guess the last thing is uh, across the street I mm -hmm. think y'all have asked me about that uh, they did drop off today today is the deadline uh, for a uh, final plat so we got that we'll start working on that so y'all will see that next PNC meeting that's all I've got any other questions from anyone we have a motion to adjourn so moved we have a motion to adjourn Second. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. We're adjourned.